adventures of Biggles. Biggles' assignment in the West Indies has produced nothing but setbacks and false trails until Algy makes a lucky guess. It again leads the flyers to the island of Inagua. After a night of heavy rain, they make a further reconnaissance of the arid, depressing blob of land with its immense lagoon. But this time, there is a difference. The lagoon has changed chip, and there are several smaller stretches of water that weren't there before. One of these, to Algy's excitement, is shaped like a pear. It corresponds with Hagen's map. That's it, Biggles. Yes. Yes, I think that's what we're looking for. There's no question of it. And look, by the end of it, there's a sort of lump. Th th that's the square marked on the chart. It could be, Algy. If it's still doubtful, fly over it again. Come in low and we'll know if we're right. I won't do that. If anyone was watching, they'd know we were interested. But you still haven't made up your mind, have you? <laughs> yes, I have. I'm as excited as you are. But the incident with the yacht has made me careful. Funny about the water not being there yesterday when you came over. It is rather. But it's a flat, low-lying island, and it obviously collects water during heavy rain. That's why so many of the features are different today. It must have been like this when Hagen hid the papers. It's possible. Oh, hang it all, Biggles. What more do you want? There's a colony of flamingos on the island. He started to write the name of his letter to von Stalin. And now we've seen the lagoon shaped like a pear. It must be the island. Cool down, Algy. I'm going to work on that theory. You'll put down? Not this morning. Why not? Two good reasons. There may be someone watching the kite and waiting for it to land. And then we'll have to equip ourselves with rations and so forth, ready for a long stay. Oh, we shan't be here long. Hagen's papers will be in that mound thing by the end of the small lagoon. They may be, but this time we're going to do it properly, Algy. We're going to move on to Inagua. And keep on searching until we found these confounded papers. You're definitely acting on this idea, are you, Bigglesworth? Yes, Colonel. It's the only positive conclusion the evidence leads to. Your evidence seems very thin to me. As chief of police, I'd hesitate before acting on it. Would you? When you know von Stahlein and his gang may be there already? Yes, that puts a different complexion on it. Von Stahlein's dangerous, sir. He's clever, he acts fast, and he's utterly ruthless. If he's found a lead to the papers, he won't waste any time in following it. Do you think he has? I'm sure of it. There's the business of the photographs. The flamingo nests. Yes, he could identify the island from those. And the fact that he's gone at all proves he knows something definite. We wouldn't shake off von Starhein unless he'd found what he was looking for. Confounded nuisance. I've been barracking for you, you know, Bigglesworth. I expected you to beat him to this island and to Hagen's papers. <laughs> I'm English, sir. I often don't win until the end of the scrap. Well, of course. It isn't over yet by a long way. Forgive me for mentioning it, sir, but when I first came to Jamaica, I had the idea you were sceptical about the affair. I was. Thought this business about plans of secret weapons just so much rot. But you proved to me that Zoratov and this von Stalin fellow and Napoleon Morgan were involved in it. That changed my view. You believe now that before he died, Hagen hid his plans of that Nazi secret weapons? Yes, I do. And I believe, too, that England isn't the only European power trying to find them. The thought of that swine Zorotov finding them before you makes me... makes me want to put the entire Jamaica police force at your disposal. <laughs> oh, I think we'll do better without them. Oh? I've some good men here, don't you worry. Oh, the best. I, I didn't mean that, sir. It's simply that we're a small, compact team. We're used to working on our own. It's... it's less unwieldy that way. Hmm... I don't want to be left out of this entirely, Bigglesworth. I don't quite understand, sir. Well, you're operating in my territory. I've issued warrants for the arrest of the men you're working against. And to put it bluntly, man, I'm just uh, plain interested in the reason for your assignment. I don't want to uh, see anyone but England get these papers. Ah, people aren't planning to put them to use, you know. 
I've been sent out not so much to take the papers back to England as to see that they don't go anywhere else. Precisely. You will keep them away from idiots that might want to stoke up another war. Best thing you could possibly do. That's why I'm interested. Of course, if you want to come with us, sir. Me? Good heavens, man, I'm too old for those capers. <laughs> Lumbago gives me curry sometimes. Then, what are you leading up to, sir? I'd like you to take one of my men. Then I'd feel I was represented, and uh, you'd have another body you could call on if necessary. Of course. I'd be delighted to do that. Uh, Tom Heyman says the boy. Frankly, it was his idea. Ever since he met your fellows, he's been badgering me to assign him to special duty with you. You couldn't give me anyone better. Tom did a grand job on that, um, <clears throat> affair with the fishing boat yesterday. Mm, cheeky young pup. <laughs> he told me he thoroughly enjoyed himself, even if it did nearly cause an international <laughs> incident. <laughs> my blokes felt the same. They'll get on well with Tom. Can he report to my hotel right away? He can go back with you. He's waiting for word from me now. Good. Would you hustle him up, sir? I want to finish provisioning and planning by tonight and take off for Inagua first thing in the morning. Ginger's a clot, you see, Tom. If you're going to work with us, you'll have to understand that. <laughs> oh, your keep, Bertie. The day will come. You see, he can't control his temper. Even now he's muttering under his belly beard. I said your keep. Very sad, really. The poor old sausage thinks he can understand uh, what we're saying and that we can understand what he's saying. But when he loses control, he speaks in this weird mumbo-jumbo. Mumbo-jumbo? Why, you ain't... Hold not. him, Tom. He's really quite violent when he gets like this. Yeah. Yes, I've got him. Tom, for, for Pete's sake, don't encourage the idiot. The only thing to do is to ignore him. Can you understand a word of it, Albin? Oh, not a syllable. Now, look here, Tom. Uh oh, I... violence rearing its ugly belly head again. I'll have to soothe him. Oh, is it possible? There is a way. Harriet, old darling. Oh, let me go, Tom. I've got to stop him. Who's Harriet? That confounded hunting horn. Don't let him blow it. There, there, little trout. Uncle Bertie will soon put you to sleep, he buys. He always becomes upset at the mention of Harriet. But when he hears her gentle strains, ah... Uh... Oh, suffering cats, Tom. Can't you see what he's going to do? Let me go! You've no idea what the row's like. You just stay quietly, Ginge. Uncle Bertie knows what he's doing. He's driving us slowly mad. Stark raving cuckoo. Quick, Harry, old darling. He's worse than usual this morning. And Tom! <laughs> oh, good heavens, this is awful. Yeah, I know. We've got to stop him. Let me go. Oh, what can we do? There are a couple of coats over there. Grab one. Right. But now, get him. Uh, 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 now, look here, Blake. Bob, 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 Manowar Bay looks our best anchorage. It's about halfway between the lagoon and the mangoes. And we should be able to circle around and go in without attracting too much attention. If they're down there, they'll have seen us already, won't they? No reason why they should be suspicious, even if they have. Plenty of planes fly over these islands. And anyway, it seems more likely that there's no one down there. I hope not. Tell the boys we're going down. They may care to stretch their legs when we're safely in. Footprints, by Jove. Footprints in the belly sand. Yes. I say, old man Friday must have come tootling along in this direction. Man Friday, nothing. See the set? Narrow shoes with long pointed toes. I know who wears shoes like that. Who? Napoleon Morgan. Those are his prints. They prove that von Stahlein and his boys beat us to the island. If von Stahlein's gang is on the island, Biggles will not find it easy to search for the missing papers. Have the crooks already found them? Do they know the air police have arrived? Listen for the excitement in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. <laughs>